Kia ora. You may remember me. I was a pro rugby player for 16 years and played 71 tests for the All Blacks. I love rugby. But at the heart of it, I'm just a Māori boy who loves Aotearoa and the outdoors. I'm on the board! <laughs> yeah, <bro. laughs> We're spoiled for choice, really. Nice little penny. Oh. <laughs> Diving, hunting, fishing, and foraging about the place. It's me. Yum. No more luck, bro. I'll end up in the drink. Ah, you'll be right, mate. Oh. In this series, I'll take you on the road as we meet hearty local characters. <laughs> you can't give yourself a nickname, <laughs> hey. Will guide me through what they do best in some of the most beautiful parts of Aotearoa. Welcome back anytime, brother. Kia ora. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> this is Piri Sticky Talk. This week, we're visiting the awesome Hokianga on the west coast of the Upper North Island. I'm going to learn the art of surf casting from a local Nore Martin in Miti Miti. You're just going to bring your rod up, sort of level with your body. Foo! That was a good cast there. <laughs> that was pretty mean there. Good teacher, mate. Before crossing the harbour to drag net for Pātiki with yeah, guide Joe. OK, who played with the net before <laughs> me, go? And come kanohi ki te kanohi with one of my biggest fears. Oh, that's... Oh, hell no! <laughs> <sighs> I'm starting my adventure by heading to the small town of Mitimiti, just north of the Hokianga Harbour, where I've heard the surf casting is incredible. Nestled behind the Warawara Forest, which houses over 12,000 acres of native bush, Mitimiti is about as remote as it gets. It's a locals only kind of place, and it doesn't take long to see why. Its ruggedness will blow you away. Ko te tahi tangata e mōhi o pūana ki tēnei wahi, ko Nore Mātin. Kia ora, Nore. Kia ora, oh, well, Welcome to my backyard, our, our haukainga here of Miti Miti. Hi. Yeah, you come to a good place. I grew up here in Miti Miti, spent most of my life here. Did a short stint away, but uh, returned home in the last few years and wouldn't want to be anywhere else. The settlement in Miti Miti itself might be maybe just over 100 people, possibly. My wife's a teacher here. You know, there's only 30 odd kids at our school. It's just a beautiful part of the country. Their whole backyard is beautiful ocean in the background there. So hopefully uh, you put us on the spot to get us. What are we getting? Snapper? Hope so, bro. Snapper is one of the largest and most valuable coastal fisheries here in Aotearoa. The legal size is 30 centimetres, but they have been known to grow up to one metre and as heavy as 19 kgs. We're just going to rod fish for now, but uh, we'll see see what we can get. What's the one? Got a bit of a crew here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few characters from home. Well, for and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're all related, most of us. Pretty much the whole town was uh, up there to come out for a bit of a uh, fun day out by the water. No pressure. No pressure on you, bro. No pressure on me to, <laughs> to <laughs> Actually, pull in the koi. All the pressure's on me, bro. You're, you're here. You're our, you're our manuhuri for the day, so um, we're going to try and deliver. So. All right. We usually get a good koi, so um, hopefully that's going to be the case today. A ture, he rori tu whera kea ngā taha tika o te wāhi nei, ko te kotahirau kiromita te pai tere. All our locals have got their own quad bites, old beach hacks, anything to get us to, to the spots. Nore and I are rolling to the first spot in his personally customised rod holding rad 4. Cruising down the beach is one thing, but I'm still green at surf casting. Te ahua nei, toko maha ki kai mā takitaki. Is this our spot, cuz? Yeah, this is our spot for now, bro. This is a good um, playground to learn on. So you, it's only sand and stuff, so by the time you get on the rocks, bro, you'll be, you'll be fit to go and ready still to be, play them properly. Bloody still be amateur. <laughs> <laughs> Supposed to have a little bit of natural talent as an athlete, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure you'll be able to pick up the art of throwing a rod. It's not that hard. What am I trying to do? Just try and get it as far as I can? Pretty much, bro. A good cast might get us out close to 100 metres. What? <laughs> That's with, that's with a bait on. Um, if you can get out around 50 metres up, you're, you're pretty sweet. <laughs> you mean five? <laughs> five <laughs> metres, cuz. I can't say I'm brimming with confidence as Nori shows off his arsenal of weapons. This is my main beast, bro. It's even got a name, Patsuika. Yeah. 
We have to use these sand sinkers, bro, when we fish up here because of the current in there and the waves. Yeah. What's the mussels for? A feed. Oh, no, they're for bait too, bro. Oh, but they're also for lunch in case we don't catch any fish. <laughs> <laughs> All you're gonna do, bro, is you're gonna put your finger on the line and hold it tight against the rod. Flip the bail arm and scoop over. You're just gonna bring your rod up, sort of level with your body. You're just gonna pull it over and then sort of let it go. It's, it's, it comes down to timing to be able to do it. Yo. After this build up, I'm pretty excited to see what Nordic can do. Hika, first cast. Easily over 80 metres. Your turn, bro. <laughs> just aim straight out if you can, bro. I just thought as long as I can get it uh, in the water, I'm happy. Yeah, and just walk out and away you go. Foo! <laughs> what an expert. I thought he was going to do the big epic fail that quite a lot of people do on their first time, but that sinker went flying into the air and out it went. So that was a good cast there. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah. Good teacher, mate. <laughs> Practice cast in the bag. Nori is keen to hit a favourite spot off the rocks and hopefully hook something big. Along the west coast here, our target species are usually snapper and kahawai and trevally and every now and again we might pick up the odd kingfish if the uh, weather and the, the time of the year is right. So where are we here, cuz? This is where the fish come in and feed off all the mussel beds and stuff. So hopefully that'll bring the snapper around. Um, usually get the odd one here, but we won't jinx ourselves until we get out there and find out. You tick at our it only takes a few minutes for the fish to start biting. Looks like a good sized kawai, hit it pretty hard. I, don't, I think she's a hooked all right, so we should get him up. Oh! Good one, too. A, uh, it's a good sized one, cuz. I was starting to think that they have uh, bloody dinosaurs up here for uh, kawai. Oh, it was a lot bigger than the ones I've seen back home. One nil, Cuzzy. <laughs> I thought you were Not... supposed to give me the rod when it's got something on it, babe. <laughs> oh, it's taken a while to get the first bite. I was getting with balls, <laughs> babe. I see oh, how I it is. Yeah, he gave me a little bit of a funny look. I don't think he was too happy. Damn it! One of the boys are on too over there, look. All of a sudden, it seems like everyone can catch fish but me. Typical. Hopefully, something bites on my one. While the fish might be interested in taking my bait for the time being, Holy it's a great opportunity to learn a bit more about my host, Nori. How long have you been up here for, Cus? I grew up here, but uh, well, I've spent 12 years in the police before um, finishing up just over a year ago. Did half of my career in Auckland and the other half up here. I always had the dream to join the police so that I could help my own people. After I'd done my time on the, the front line, I, I turned my attention to Māori focused policing. This is where I grew up and this is where all my whanau are from and sort of try and give a little bit back to our, our community now. My wife and I, our three children, it was about getting them back home to, to their roots and yeah, just be a part of what it is to be someone from the Hokianga. Most of our kaumatu have gone now and it's up to our younger generation to stand up, I suppose, and help carry on the traditions of the old people that they left us so that our, our, our culture never dies. And with those wise words from Nori, my luck seems to have changed. There you got him, bro. The other bro's getting bites. Oh! oh. <laughs> Purari paka. <laughs> I feel like uh, just shooting myself right now. <laughs> Damn it. <sighs> I think Tangaro might be finally hearing my cries. I'm on again. Oh, oh could this be the red, bro? No pressure. Wait for this next wave. Pull my brake. Yeah, boy. Nice to rally. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it's not the target species, cuz. <laughs> oh, no. That's a good species. I'm oh, lucky to uh, land a uh, trevally. Yeah, my first one actually is a uh, great experience, that. I'm on the board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> I was stoked that uh, he'd finally caught a fish because it had been a slow day. And then it was one all by the time he pulled in this trevally. The bro Nori uh, told me what to do, and uh, I landed it this time and not lost the bloody thing. So sweet, chuck that one in the freezer. I have to say, with one on the board, I'm pretty keen to get stuck in the game and take the lead. Engari, ke te huri te tai, 
Kwa whakatau a nore me mutu i konei. The snapper will have to wait for tomorrow. If I a kenei, it's an early morning expedition to complete the trifecta. Oh, it's a good fish too. And I get up close and personal with something I'd oh. rather not. Oh, that's, oh, hell no! <laughs> The wake up call was an early one this morning here in the Hokianga. It's time for round two of surf casting with local enthusiast Nori. I karona tamuri i a ina nahi, but we're determined that it won't be the case today. Sweet Bray will be fishing right on the turn of the tide, and if the snappers are around well, can get ready for action. I certainly hope that Nori is right, but either way, it's a beautiful morning for a hoon down the beach. I've seen a, a nice looking hole uh, out in the water and I thought, oh, this has got to be it. A day sort of like today where it's not too calm, not too rough. It still uh, stirs up a little bit of koi for the fish, so. All I had in the back of my mind was mana on the line. Any bites, Bray? Oh, I've got a few. Within probably about five, ten minutes of us being there, uh, we started getting nibbles. Got them, pretty. Walk up here, Bray. Trying to pull the fish in and, and land it is, uh, is one thing. The hard part's trying to make sure it doesn't snap the line. Oh. Yeah, it got away. Oh, must have been a shark, bro. Oh, there's a 20 pound snapper chewed through it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one to cry about my losses, and thankfully, I don't have time to. I'm on again. Leave a bit of length, bro, and walk back in so we can get him up on the rock. Pretty managed to uh, get in the hot seat with Patuika, which is uh, which is the name of name of my rod. It lives up to its name. It's a fish layer. Bring it back. I'll winch him up, bro. I was hoping it was going to be something uh, red, like a snapper. What did you say to me yesterday? One nil. <laughs> oh. We hadn't quite got that trifecta. We'd caught a kawai, we'd caught a trevally, and we're just waiting on that one big snapper. And guess what I just hooked? Oh, it's a good fish too, whatever it is. I was uh, trying to navigate it so that it could come straight to where we were, in between these two rocks. Yeah, bro, just take your time with them. Oh! <laughs> Ping. And I looked at him and I was just like, oh, amateur, B. Oh. <laughs> I was pretty good. I'll be honest with you. That was the red one too, I think, bro. Just saying. No, I think the bro just tried to put a bit too much mana into the job and line snap. See you later to the big tamuri. That must be a sign from Tangaroi. <laughs> <laughs> if losing two massive fish isn't bad enough, the next thing that happens will really tick me off. This fella might be uh, have better luck of pulling it in than Pity, I think. You got him, pull him to your left, right, son. Drag him right, lift him up. I think that's how we land him, bro. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> One oar. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving me a bit of stick. See, this is how you do it, he reckons. Not like this. Thank you, you little <laughs> roll. <laughs> oh, go on there. Oh, like, shut up, you little punk. Mean. All right, let's go. Out of the way. <laughs> Out of the way, show off. One landed and two lost. I guess that leaves me at minus one. It may not have been a productive day by naughty standards, but it's been a mean day nonetheless. Katutaki o Nōki o Nōri a muri atu ki te kai. But in the meantime, I'm heading south across the Hokianga Harbour to Whirinaki to meet with local legend and guide, Joe Winyard. Kia ora, Joe. Hey. How's things? Good, good, good. Yourself? Oh, yeah, not too bad. I uh, found out that you do a bit of... Uh, Guiding around here. Yeah, do a bit of guiding. guiding tours. Yeah. So I do uh, tours around here, around the Hokianga, to gather kaimoana with our, our visitors, and we take them into the Waikato Forest uh, to see our beautiful trees that we have over there. Uh, the Cody trees, like Tani Mahita and that. So, uh, what have we got planned? Uh, we're looking at going for the drag and hopefully get some pātiki around us. We're going to have to get wet. Uh, yeah, you're gonna get weird. We'll see if we can get a kite, that's the main thing, bro. Right. 
If not, we're just gonna look like amateurs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what drag netting for partygate entails, but before I take the plunge to find out, Joe's father, who recently turned 90, is going to give us a few tips he's learned from growing up in the Rohe. Well, this is the mouth of the hour, just above us here. Right. And right through, right back to where we started from, Whanau used to live all along either side of the creek. My father, uh, he's always been my strength and knowledge, and. When I, whenever I needed to know something, I'd consult with him. Rumour has it that Joe's dad actually developed a technique to catch Pātiki with his bare hands. That's the flounder there. Mm -hmm. So you dirty the water here, so it drifts to go over that flounder. As soon as you get over it, you just stick your fingers there and just bring your palm or your hand down like that. The flounder will never go sideways, never go backwards. They'll always go forward, so you just close your hand like that on its head and you got it. I think it's always a good experience when you meet new people, especially Joe and his, and his whanau. It's always good to have local knowledge. Not everyone's the same, and it's always cool to try and find uh, new ways of uh, catching things. And Now what I want you to do is, next time you go and do it, go for it on the head. <laughs> then I can, you send it to me and I'll be like, hey! Just to see it to believe. Unfortunately, we won't be attempting to catch flounder like Joe's dad. Today, Joe's teaching me a technique called drag netting. So put my foot on this. Yeah. Once, once you get out there, and then, yep. uh, yeah, to keep the, the weight down on the, on the bottom. So I'll feed it out as you go. Drag netting is when you use a net, yep. one of you then have to get wet, of course, and uh, get out into the water. Where to go, bro? And uh, drag the net and, and pull it back to shore. Quite simple way of catching fish. Well, it would be simple, but it looks like we've found our first problem. Now we're tangled up. When was the last time you used it? Two days ago. Now, mate, tangled up again. There we go. Well, that was a brand new net, and it was uh, it kept you know, uh, getting tangled. So we had our, our had our fun today. Eh? I thought you were supposed to be sharp at this. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's true, look, mate. look what's happening. <laughs> 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 okay, who played with the net before me? Eh? I've never sort of gone for flounder like that, but uh, we got the situation sorted and uh, we got on with the job. Pull the bottom, babe. Keep the bottom down. You feel something heavy? Just look for a runaway train coming towards you, called a stingray. You do realise Steve Irwin died from uh, getting stung one from one of those, eh? Uh, only if you stand on it, babe. Only if well, you stand on it. It's not even clear water. <laughs> <laughs> Start swinging in, babe. If there's any part ticket in there, we don't want them to go out underneath. How are we looking? We're looking. Average? Jellyfish, eh? Yep. Yeah. So uh, all we caught, I think, in that first scoop would have been just uh, jellyfish, I think it was. No one home. I'll take it out, mate. Jellyfish shouldn't be hard to beat. Boy, I'm glad I'm not hungry. Have a mummy if you want to warm up. <laughs> <laughs> there is a bit of uh, pull. Yep, I can see one there. Oh, no, it's not. I can't Pretty see anything. <laughs> Come on, baby. You need to catch one fish anyway. Me puno aku kōrero. I was starting to feel the hokianga was holding out on me. That was until this showed up. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that's... Oh, hell no! <laughs> oh, I thought I saw... I found the bit, uh, something a bit bigger. After crossing the Hokianga Harbour to drag net for Pātiki with local guide Joe, I've now discovered we may have bitten off a little more than we can chew. Oh! Here comes the freight train. Oh, that's... Oh, hell no! <laughs> you can touch that! What was that flounder? No, it's something bigger than that. I'd actually sort of thought to myself, I wonder when Pity going to see it or whether it's going to get close to him, you know? Oh, I thought I saw... A flounder, two but of them. It's, uh, something a bit bigger. Spotted some uh, splashing around and was just trying to figure out what it was. Uh, the closer I got, finally figured out that it wasn't flounder. Stingray. I think it's a stingray. Oh, hey, uh, that's yours. Oh, there's hey, there's two, two of them, babe. I thought we had cracked it. Well, we cracked it. All right. Bloody stingrays. 
OK, 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 OK. Yeah. Two stingrays. I wasn't too keen to touch those at all uh, after what happened with uh, Steve Irwin. <laughs> yeah, what they called the freight train. Yeah, you would definitely get of uh, the stingray that we uh, caught in the net today. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh. We did the old tag and release. Yeah. You know, I was hoping that Joe would just uh, release it himself, but I had to get in there and try and let the little bloody thing uh, swim away. I know how I'll do it. Hey. Look at the other way around. These little fellas are eagle rays. They do have a poisonous barb on their tail, but injuries to humans are exceptionally rare. Some people eat them. I stay as far away as possible. Can I have another game? After seeing those two things <laughs> floating around, <laughs> I don't know if it's safe. With the luck I've had so far, I'm not risking another run with the net. Mark's had a 10 for the first time, uh, so I'll give him uh, a bit of over half, say so six. But I have to say, I had a lot of fun and have come away with a new appreciation for the people of the Hokianga. Tahi ano te wahi me hario. Ia o iko nei i hoki anga. Na me hoki o iki miti miti. Hare mai, hare mai, hare mai. Me happy me mai, me happy me mai, me happy me mai. Akoma ti he ti he. Kia ora tātou katoa. Uh, he mihi a te tēnei, kia koutou katoa mō tō koutou nei uh, haka pōhiri, uh, nā kaukāranga. Kia ora mō tēnei uh, whakatau i tēnei rā, ki tēnei whenua o uh, Mitsumitsi. So hands up, who knows who, who Piri is? Ā oh, pai. It was time for a few questions from our tamariki and yeah, the kids obviously knew who, who Piri Wepu was. And... What made you want to not do rugby? Old age. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the questions were pretty hard case, actually. <laughs> Man, they must watch a lot of uh, pretty shows. How heavy was the pig when you got it? <laughs> oh. uh, it was like 179 more pounds or something like that. Yeah, it was pretty heavy. I'm just happy to say that I didn't fall over when I was carrying the pig. All those other fellas did. <laughs> <laughs> and you could tell which ones uh, are your hunters. Everything was um, talked about uh, how big the pig was that I uh, landed in Kaitaia in Broadwood. What would your advice be to any uh, promising athletes in the future that might want to make sport a career? I've always said this to people that have always asked me this question when you're a kid, is actually just enjoy it, have fun with your friends, and remember why you're doing it. Once you get to uh, a certain stage or a certain age, it's a lot harder than, uh, than you think it is. But yeah, for me, it's just love the fact that you get to run around uh, playing the sport. Q&A over, it's time for a kai. And I hear some of the fish we caught earlier are on the menu. The hakari was awesome. Watching the kids line up to tuck into some, some kai was uh, cool. <laughs> you know, to have a, an ex-All Black in, in amongst them, that gives them a buzz as well. And a TV star now, so yeah. So thanks guys for, um, I've been a couple of days, but I really appreciate uh, you showing me around and showing me uh, your backyard, really. Oh, no, bro, thanks for coming up. It's been awesome having you. You know, we didn't quite hit the mark for what we wanted, but we still got plenty of and well, here we are eating it now, bro. So more than welcome any time to return, and no doubt the next time you come up, we'll, we'll definitely hit it. So it was pretty cool hanging out with Pity. You know, it would have been nice if we had got him onto a little bit more action or if he had maybe landed that snapper, but... Um, who knows, maybe that might open a door for him to come back and try again and uh, when, when the fishing's a bit hotter. And a good buzz for our whanau at home too, having a legend in town. Oh, what, yourself? Well, there's two now. <laughs> 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 My experience here in, uh, in Hokianga area, in Mitsumitsi and also in uh, Furunaki has been um, outstanding. I'm on the board! <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> the locals have been awesome and, you know, the, the landscape itself has been, um, been beautiful.